In the last few years, the Mohammedan Muslims have been asserting their religious right to have their women wear the hijab in the Western democracies. Is it really required in their religion? Like all the answers and statements that I give in this series, no matter how unbelievable or even offensive they may sound, are nonetheless based entirely upon the Arabic language of the Quran and of the Hadiths with all the corresponding references. The Arabic word hijab is sometimes translated as veil, but it can also signify anything that prevents something from being seen, such as a screen, a curtain, a wall, or even a hymen. The root of the verb is hajaba, meaning to hide. In the Quran, the term was originally used to mean a screen, a curtain, a divide from cloth, to separate especially the guests from the females of Muhammad's household. The story that explains the reason for this particular alleged revelation of verse 33.53 is mentioned in detail in Bukhari Hadith 8.255 or 8.257. Bukhari Hadith 8.255, narrated by Anas bin Malik, says that he was a boy of 10 at the time when Muhammad emigrated to Medina. He added, I served Allah's apostle for 10 years, and I know more than the people about the occasion whereupon the order of hijab was revealed. It was revealed during the marriage of Allah's apostle with Zainab bin Jahsh. In the morning, the Prophet was the bridegroom of her, and he invited the people, who took their meals and went away. But a group of them remained with Allah's apostle, and they prolonged their stay. Allah's apostle got up, and went out, and I too went out along with him till he came to the lintel of Aisha's dwelling place. Allah's apostle thought that those people had left by then, so he returned, and I too returned with him, till he entered upon Zainab and found that they were still sitting there and had not yet gone. The prophet went out again, and so did I with him, till he reached the lintel of Aisha's dwelling again, and then he thought that those people must have left by then. So he returned, and so did I with him, and found those people had gone. At that very instance, the divine verse of Al-Hijab was revealed, and the Prophet set a screen between me and his family. Chapter 33, verse 53. O oh, ye who believe, enter not the Prophet's houses until leave is given you for a meal, to await for his preparation. But when ye are invited, enter, and when ye have taken your meal, disperse without seeking familiar talk. Such behavior annoys the Prophet. He is ashamed to dismiss you, but Allah is not ashamed to tell you the truth. And when ye ask his ladies for anything, you must ask them from before a screen, hijab, that makes it for greater purity for your hearts and for theirs. Nor is it right for you that you should annoy Allah's apostle or that you should marry his widows after him at any time. Truly, such a thing is in Allah's sight an enormity. It is crystal clear from the verse above that all of its instructions are to do with Muhammad's personal annoyance at the behavior of his guests, as usual with Muhammad and his Quran. An instant made to order revelation was descended to turn his personal objections into unchallengeable divine sanctions, emanating from the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme rock god of the Kaaba. In fact, the actual Arabic words used in the verse above are min wara'i hijabi, which should have been translated instead to from behind a screen. By no stretch of the imagination can any intelligent being construe that the verse implies or means to cover the body of the female believer with any special clothing. All it instructs is that there should be a separation between the guest's area of the home of the believers from the private areas. While the idea of the hijab was to create an atmosphere of modesty vis-à-vis -vis the females of the believers, the male Muhammadan exegetes created an incredible set of lies to control women in body, in mind, and in soul, thus making them totally subservient to their will. By what kind of twisted logic can anyone accuse the women of Muhammad and Islam of tempting the men if these men are too weak 
or stupid to control their sexual predatory appetites and emotions. Using exactly the same perverted logic, one can also accuse Muhammadan men of tempting women and have them wear the hijab instead, especially since the Quran instructs both the men and women, believers to be chaste and modest. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 8.257 narrated by Aisha, the wife of the Prophet. Omar ibn al-Khattab used to say to Allah's Apostle, let your wives be veiled, but he did not do so. Omar was anxious for some divine orders regarding the veiling of women. So Allah revealed the verse of the veiling, al-hijab. Although both the Quran and the Hadiths clearly explain the meaning and reason for the hijab, nonetheless, the male chauvinist followers of Muhammad deliberately misinterpreted and or misrepresented it to mean that the female followers should be covered from head to toe with a garment from which only their eyes can be seen. This is a method to control Muhammad and Muslim women physically, intellectually and spiritually, so as to have them totally subservient to the will of the men as if they were domesticated animals. They want to cover the female followers of Muhammad, hundreds of millions of God's human creations, as if they are an offense to the Almighty. Al-Hajj Mawlana Falzul Karim in Mishkat Al-Masabih, volume 2, page 692 says, A woman is like a private part. When she goes out, the devil casts a glance at her. That is why the male Muhammad and Muslims want their women covered as if they were genitals. The Arabic word hijab is used in the Quran four times only, as in the following verses, 7.46, 17.45, 38.32, 42.51, to describe a screen, a divide, a separator, a curtain, a veil of separation. In none of them is the word associated with any kind of dress or costume covering the whole body of anyone or anything. What is being enforced upon the Europeans and other democracies today is a politicized form of hijab, so that slowly but surely, more and more Sharia-based rules are insinuated into the consciousness of our democracies, acting as a slow poisoning of our values. The hijab is not in the Quran or in the Hadiths as a total covering of the women of Muhammadan Islam and no Muhammadan Muslim can prove otherwise. Muhammadan Muslims depend entirely upon the ignorance of a humanity in general regarding the Arabic language and the actual meaning of the Quranic verses to fool, to deceive and to misinform them so that they can insinuate their agenda into our consciousness and undermine our democracies.